In our previous video, we were talking about analyzing our supply chain. Why is each part of the supply chain being done where it is? Can we sort in the supply chain? How does the supply chain align with our strategies for our organization? And how do we evaluate that relationship with the retailer? The last one we were looking at was improving the quality and leanness of an entire supply chain, which brings us to the topic of the closed loop supply chain. As we are looking at eliminating waste and making a more lean organization and not just our organization, but all the members of our supply chain, we look at the idea of a closed loop supply chain. So typically when we talk about supply chains, we're looking at forward logistics. We make a product, it goes to the distributor, it then goes to the wholesaler, it then goes to the retailer. It's moving forward towards the customer. But we need to recognize that we also have products being returned to the retailer. And then what happens to those products? So maybe it's simply a dress you bought that doesn't look good on you. It's not your style, it's not your color. There's nothing wrong with it. But you return it to the bay, and then what does the bay do with it? Does it stay at the bay or does it move backwards through the supply chain to the wholesaler or distributor? This is what is called reverse logistics. Materials can move backwards through the supply chain because we simply return it because it doesn't match what we want. Maybe it's defective product. You bought a TV at Best Buy. It doesn't work. It's broken. You return it to Best Buy. What does Best Buy do with it? Well, do they return it to another company? Does it move backwards through the supply chain? And at some point, maybe it gets repaired. It becomes refurbished. And then it comes back for sale at a different price. We also need to recognize that what happens to products when it's end of use. So I have an iPhone, I want a newer model. There's nothing wrong with it, it still works, but I don't want it anymore. I want the one that has new features. Is there a way for me to trade it in? So when I buy the newer model, can I get a discount on the newer model's price by trading in the old one? In which case it goes back to the Apple store and then it moves backwards through the supply chain. We also have end of life returns. That is, the product is, does, uh, it was not that it was defective when we bought it. You know, I used it for a good 10 years. Maybe I bought a TV that I've had for a number of years. And so I'm done with it. And I don't want to throw it directly into the landfill. Can I return it? And can it go back up through the supply chain? And maybe pieces of it can be pulled apart and used to make new products. So if we're managing both the forward logistics and reverse logistics, we have what is called a closed loop supply chain. So we manage a closed loop supply chain the same way you manage a supply chain. We just recognize that we are dealing not only with forward logistics, but reverse logistics as well. And so when we look at reverse logistics, we need to determine why is a product being returned? It just doesn't fit. So it's a commercial return, maybe it doesn't work, so it's defective, or maybe the customers had it a while and it's either end of use or end of life. You know, what do we want to happen to these end of life products? We don't want them to go in the landfill. Can they be maybe recycled or pieces of them reused within the new products? Uh, can the companies that were involved in the supply chain help reduce the amount of items that end up in the landfill? And so we see that a lot with electronics, right? In terms of electronics recycling, a battery recycling is often done through companies um, that are part of the supply chain. So how a closed loop supply chain works. We have the standard forward logistics, factory, distributor, wholesaler, retailer, we sell to the customer. If the customer returns an item to the retailer, so you return the TV to Best Buy, Best Buy then needs a way to evaluate the return. Is the return of the TV because it's broken? Does it then just go into waste so we have it disposed of? Or can it go to a recovery facility, in which case maybe it is refurbished, and so they're going to fix the broken parts of the TV, and then it's going to go back and be sold to a distributor and to a wholesaler and to a retailer. 
Maybe that the product isn't itself defective. Maybe it's just an end of use. So it's that phone that I don't want anymore. Um, I return as a customer to the retailer. It gets evaluated and it just needs a little cleaning. It works pretty well, but it's an older model. So then it gets put into a new market. Maybe it's sold in another country where they can't afford a $1,000 phone, but they can afford a $300 phone. So selling them the older technology is just fine. And so it is refurbished or remarketed uh, in a different market. Well, alternatively, if it is a product that nobody wants, it can't be refurbished or resold. Maybe it's just really old or it was broken. Um, can we take pieces out of it? So what we see with companies like Apple, for example, is that because rare earth minerals that are used in electronics become more expensive, they are rare, uh, and they involve things like strip mining in order to get to them, so they have a great impact on the environment, there's an incentive to be more environmentally friendly by reusing the materials from old products instead of um, harvesting or mining for new ones. And so then when it goes to the recovery facility, we pull out those uh, important components and they are then used in the new phones. So it's part of that um, recycling and remanufacturing process and those old components get put into new product. So this reverse logistics here involves additional companies as part of the supply chain. So we might have a recovery facility, a disposal facility. We might have a third party that's doing those evaluations of those returns. We may, as we talked about before, when Amazon returns come in, they get sold to a third party who is going to sell them. So like that crazy bins. And so now we have more companies involved as they become the new distributors, wholesalers, and retailers uh, for that supply chain. So when we look at the supply chain, we need to recognize that it is a value chain, not just a waste stream. It's not just instead of the customer throwing it in the garbage, we're giving it back to a different company to throw in, in the garbage, which means that reverse logistics have to be profitable. For companies to do them, it has to make money. And so we need to consider the opportunity cost of time. How long does it take to assess the returns and get them to a point at which they can either be put into a new product, they can be refurbished, they can be remarketed. How long does it take to get to that component where we can sell them to create value for the customer and create profit for the organization? So companies are only going to do it if it's something that can be done timely and it is profitable. So we need to consider how long it takes to return the product to the market. The less valuable that uh, return product becomes, the less uh, the companies will be interested in closing the supply chain. We also need to consider the life cycle of the products. The, the length of the life cycle is, of course, going to determine its obsolescence risk. How long is that product going to be good for? Um, and so the length of that life cycle will determine whether or not uh, it's worthwhile to close that supply chain. And we said that the closed loop supply chain has to be managed like a supply chain. That is that reverse logistics have to have value added and have to create profit for the organization, uh, just like the forward logistics.